Hello there, Simplex is the name, Eurospy is the game. Today I'm reviewing a film that features a man who, unlike Bond in You Only Live Twice, actually does live a second life. An attempt to unite the entire world via a peace conference, and also a double agent sent to kill a double agent who was actually a double agent in disguise because he was nearly killed because of being a double agent. So welcome back to Eurospy Cinema, a series where I review various movies that fit into the Eurospy category. The film is Assassination, the directorial debut of Emilio Miraglia from 1967. So what takes place? Well, after the credits, the film opens with a widow visiting her husband who is on death row. They have a short, blunt conversation, then in a very dramatic scene, the man is led off to be executed in the chair. However, he isn't. Our friend, whose name is John Chandler, wakes up in a hospital bed, listening to a recording of a guy telling him a bunch of information about the new identity he is to assume, that of his brother Philip. Philip is the complete opposite of John, something which makes the identity change hard for John. So after some time in minor plastic surgery, Philip is led out into the real world with the mission of rejoining his old crime organisation so as to kill their leader. For the next chunk of the film, Philip is either making inroads in the villainous organisation that the CIA want him to infiltrate, or he's talking to his CIA handlers. Meanwhile, we find out that Barbara, the wife that Philip had when he was John, is soon to remarry to none other than an agent of the villains. The baddies then give Philip the mission of following Barbara and her new husband on their honeymoon in Hamburg. After surveying the two for a while, uh, Philip is given a new mission. You see, a diplomatic conference is to begin soon between Russia, the US and a number of other countries. The baddies want him to assassinate an American, Senator Graham. Meanwhile, we discover that Barbara's new husband, Bob, is actually a double agent and so he also works for the CIA. The CIA then task Bob with the mission of killing Philip. Meanwhile, the bad guys have realised that they have a double agent amongst them. They've narrowed it down to Philip and Bob, so they make them play a game of life and death. Philip, upon realising that Bob isn't just Barbara's husband, but that he is actually also a double agent, comes to the realisation that it must have been Bob who was the man who framed him and got him sent to the chair. So Philip kills Bob in cold blood. Following this, Philip is sent to fulfil his mission. He takes the shot and pretends to kill the senator, and then kills an enemy agent who had been sent to kill Philip after his success. After his mission, Philip and the baddies go on to sabotage the conference. The head bad guy Lang reveals that they have brought Philip here with them because they know that he is John. Their plan is to detonate the building with John inside so that the CIA is framed for the catastrophe and any future attempts at peace between the nations are halted. Through some quick thinking however, Philip is able to dispatch the goons and save the conference. He meets with his CIA handler and tells him the operation is complete. His handler is ecstatic and reminds him that he will be able to live a normal life again now. However, Chandler responds by saying that the relationship he has with his wife will never be the same because of the actions the bad guy organisation told Bob to undertake. He concludes by stating that there is still a villain even higher ranking in the organisation who is yet to fall. The CIA guy tells Chandler to not go outside as the organisation will be hunting him down, but Chandler refuses. He wants to live life the way he wants to. So, as he drives off down the highway, we see Chandler contemplating how hollow his life has become now, only for a man on a bridge to raise a rifle and fire, killing both Philip and John Chandler with the single bullet. And that's the end of the film. The story is pretty good, it overall makes sense and, you know, it's not too difficult to follow. I think the changing mission in the film and the fact that Bob is a double agent definitely muddies the plot, but, you know, it's not that bad really. I generally think that films like this that go for a more realistic Cold War depiction do benefit from a more confusing plot because that was the nature of spy work at the time. The overarching tone of the film reminds me a lot of A Dandy and Aspic, a film I reviewed a little while ago. Both films, I think, do a really nice job of depicting the nature of double agents. Especially with the character of Bob, who, like Philip, is a double agent, but because the film is coloured by Philip's perspective, we never really know which side Bob was actually working for as we see him fulfilling orders from both sides. The script has some moments that I would definitely call padding if this was a TV show, but considering this is a film, it's probably more apt to call them character development. For instance, there is a scene where Philip does some shooting demonstrations, showing he's a crack shot, something which the baddies are happy to find out. However, during this sequence, Philip fakes a jam in his gun so as to try and find out where the gun room is at the baddie headquarters. Now, the attempt to extract the information fails as they instead just give him another rifle to have on hand before heading to the gun room without him, but the moment is really neat. 
The fact that we see that Philip is not simply resting on his laurels, and that he instead is keen to gather information so that he can assassinate the head of the baddie organisation is really great. It may not have any impact on later events, but it shows the audience that Philip is still keenly focused on his mission. Another really neat part of the film is when the villains are checking whether Philip is actually a different person or whether he's John. They go to crazy lengths, acquiring many photos of him along with dusting for his fingerprints and taping his voice in phone calls. The scene is fairly long as it clearly shows that John has had minor facial plastic surgery, fingerprint alterations, and that he even speaks in a slightly different register and intonation. All this means that the baddies believe that Philip is indeed a different person. That's really neat, not only for the sake of the audience, but also for establishing the villain organisation as highly organised and keen to maintain security. Something I love that the film does is incorporate one of the worst aspects of Spectre from the Bond franchise. I overall really like Spectre as an organisation, especially the way they were portrayed around this time period with the likes of Thunderball and From Russia With Love. However, something that I've always found funny is the fact that some Spectre agents have a specific Spectre tattoo on their arm, when the organisation is supposed to be a big secret. Hilariously, the unnamed criminal organisation of this film also has some of its agents wearing easily identifiable tattoos on their arms. However, in this film it does actually serve to further the plot, so I can kind of excuse the scriptwriters for this one. The tattoo leads into one of my favourite scenes actually, where Philip receives his instructions via the porter at the hotel he's staying at. After receiving them, that is to watch Barbara and her new husband, he wants to get a little bit more information. The hotel porter has already left his room, so he goes out into the hallway to find him. However, he's nowhere to be seen. Then, when Philip asks about a porter called Otto, he discovers that there is no such person, and the same with the woman who showed him into his room. It's not strictly necessary to the plot, but it does do a really nice job of highlighting the secret nature of the organisation that Philip is trying to join. In addition to that, it also adds to the frightening and somewhat confusing atmosphere of spy work in the film, evoking ideas that nothing is truly as it seems. The camera work is pretty normal for the time, except for the execution scene at the beginning of the film. The way it's shot is very atmospheric, and accompanied by an excellent score makes the whole scene exceptionally good. There is a weight to every step John takes, and a feeling of impending dread and doom. And this is very nicely contrasted with a sudden scene change to Barbara getting out of a taxi at the lawyer's office. There are definitely some new wave influences on the film, especially with the scenes of Philip walking around in the city, where they had to do the routine of moving along with Philip as he walks down the street. It especially evokes ideas of La Nouvelle Vague because of how you can clearly see that the people in the background are definitely not extras. I mean, most either stare at the camera or notice the camera and then get embarrassed and look away. The film's score is pretty good and was written by Robbie Poitevin. It's all very competent, fitting the scenes that it's played in. Something I do very much admire about the film is the fact that the composer went to the effort of writing a specific motif for Philip. Something else of note about the score is that it often reflects Philip's mental processes. It's loud and dreary as he drives through Hamburg, but then more contemplative at the end of the film when he's driving and considering his life's course. Speaking of Philip, Henry Silver is fantastic. He portrays the struggle of taking on a new identity just so well. He's shown wrestling with how Philip is not allowed to drink, and, and also confronting the fact that he can never go back to the person he was. He plays his character as a rough, mean, ruthless killer for the CIA, setting him aside greatly from the Bond of the time. Unlike how Connery was suave and debonair, Silver plays his character as a gruff, jaded assassin. A really nice contrast, which contributes to a very fresh feel for the entire film. There's even a scene where he rejects the advances of a female enemy agent. Silver, for the most part, just does a really nice job of portraying himself as an actual spy. He acts very competent and ruthless in all the fight scenes, and he carries and handles guns like a professional. There are a few scenes where the character John has to confront his own mortality. The fact that his previous life is dead and buried, and that now he has to be a completely different man or risk death works really well with Silver's overall demeanour. In these scenes, John is amazing, with lines alike, Even if the whole world blows up, why should I give a damn now? Which just perfectly encapsulates his outlook on life itself now. The film spares no hardship for this character, 
going so far as to have his former wife tell him not to get married, because her marriage to John was a failure. Silver perfectly captures Philip's feelings in this scene, mortified that what he thought was a somewhat healthy relationship is being depicted as a major disaster. Overall, Henry Silver plays Philip exactly as he's written, and he's a very refreshing lead because of how vastly different he is from the majority of Eurospy leads at the time. Fred Bear portrayed Bob, the film's other double agent and Barbara's fiancé and later husband. He pulls a pretty solid performance and ultimately does a very nice job of making Bob feel slimy and untrustworthy. The approach to the character plays dividends as Despite Philip not being a particularly likeable character, contrasting him with Bob means that he appears much more human and relatable. Bob is definitely an ill-defined character. We never know which side he was really working for, whether it really was the CIA or the baddies. This also means that we have no idea whether he really was the man who framed John, or whether it's just Philip's blind rage that make him think that this is what happened. The biggest problem with Bob is that we just don't see him a lot. And when we do, his scenes are of little consequence to Philip. Considering how well Bear and Silver were in the scene where Bob is killed, I think it would have been so great to see these characters spark off of each other more. However, what we have is fine, and the performance by Bear is more than adequate. Evelyn Stewart was Barbara. The actress generally played roles in horror films and the like, so it's interesting to see what she does in a Eurospy setting. She does a really good job. There's a great depth that she brings to the character, especially when describing the not-so-pleasant marriage she had to John. Much like Bob, I just wish there was more time spent with this character though. It would give the actress more opportunity to show her range, as for the most part she just kind of shows up in short, odd scenes every so often. Her lack of screen time is especially irritating near the end of the film, where Philip reveals to her that he's actually John. She's shocked, but we then cut away and never see her again only a few seconds later. It would have been so interesting to see what the actress brought to the character once she realised that her dead husband was still very much alive. Peter Dane played Lang, the head of the villainous organisation, and he does a pretty nice job of the role, bringing a certain subtle cunning intelligence which I really like. He's only got a few memorable scenes, specifically when he meets with his boss, when it is revealed that Lang is not really the head of the organisation but merely the second in command, his whole performance is put into perspective. Dane, for the most part, plays him as an intelligent but slightly weak villain, almost as if he gets all his ideas from his superiors, which works perfectly with his character as that is what he is written as, the sidekick to the evil baron who leads the organisation. Bill Vanders played Thomas, Philip's CIA handler. The character is written to show up at random points of the film and make Philip's life considerably harder. And honestly, Vanders does a very nice job of this. He shows no positive emotions until the mission's conclusion, and for the most part acts grumpy and irritated. He feels volatile, which is ironic as this is how he describes Philip to his superiors, and is also one of the key reasons why he pushes Philip so hard to get results quickly no matter the cost. The unstable nature of Thomas is most clearly epitomised when he orders Bob to kill Philip at all costs. This comes just after Thomas has spent tons of time trying to position Philip to fulfil his mission, so why suddenly want him dead? It offers the audience the question as to whether Thomas is even a good guy. Maybe he works for the baddies too. This is never addressed again, but it firmly underscores how unpredictable and ruthless this character is. All these illogical decisions are very well performed by Vanders, who, paired with some great camera work, is seen to be harsh, imposing, and slightly insane. The way he talks and holds himself pairs together to create a character who, despite supposedly being a good guy, is almost as concerning as Lang, the lead villain. Overall, all of these actors are pretty solid. They range from fine to fantastic, so there's nothing really to complain about in the acting department except for the fact that they're dubbed, which for this time period is pretty unavoidable. Action-wise, the film delivers well. There aren't many action sequences, as the film tends to rely more upon suspense. However, the few that are sprinkled throughout the film are pretty good. Henry Silver is very well suited to action, as he really looks the part. There is never an action sequence when he's not convincing. Something quite notable about the action in this film is that it leaves a lasting impact on Philip. 
Unlike most Euro spies of the time, where their main character would shrug a beating off like it was nothing, Assassination features Philip appearing bruised and dishevelled after a number of rather brutal beatings. It's a refreshingly realistic approach and honestly quite unique. Overall, I'd say Assassination is worth checking out. It's definitely not a feel-good film as it features a number of rather depressing themes, however, if you're in the mood for a refreshingly realistic take on the Euro spy genre, then perhaps you might enjoy giving it a watch. The main character is not only well written but superbly portrayed with a pretty solid supporting cast, and the script holds up well despite having the old kill off the main character in the first few minutes trope. The action is very competent, the camera work has a number of quite interesting examples of La Nouvelle Vague influences, and the score fits very well. If this sounds like something you'd like, check it out. Anyway, that's all I have for this episode of Euros by Cinema, so I'll see you later. Goodbye.